Hi friends, welcome to my Bamu's Biogenius. Today we will discuss about tight junctions. We know that junctions are very important from the point of uh, cellular connections. Cells have a kind of a connection in between them. These are called as uh, junctions. And there are about five different types of junctions in a cell that we have to study today. This topic is very important for UG and PG students. So stay tuned. Now, first of all, we will discuss what is junction, how these junctions are involved. And we know that when these unicellular animals evolve into a multicellular animals, what happened that uh, there was a kind of a need for the cells to attach with each other and this particular type of need is fulfilled by developing a kind of a proteins or a kind of a arrangement that keeps the cells together. This particular type of a arrangement is known as a junctions and in a cellular world in the multicellular animals, we find five different types of junctions, which are these uh, five types of junctions. That means the tight junctions, adherent junctions, desmosomes, hemidesmosomes, and gap junctions. Now, out of these, the first one, tight junctions, are a kind of occluding junctions. They block the entry or exit of a certain types of molecules. So that's why they are called as occluding junctions. Then there are three types of anchoring junctions. Anchoring junctions means they hold the cells together. So that is known as an anchoring junction. So these three are anchoring junctions. And the last one is called as a communicating junctions because it communicates with the neighboring cells. So that's why it is called as a gap junction or a communicating junction. So these are the five types of junctions that we have to study. The first one among them is the tight junctions. Now let us discuss about tight junctions. You can see here, this is the sheet of epithelial cells. And in this sheet of epithelial cells, you can see the epithelial cells which are stitched together. Each and every corner of the cell is stitched together with the neighboring cells without showing any kind of intercellular space. Now such a type of arrangement or such a type of stitching of neighboring cells or epithelial cells with each other is achieved with the help of tight junctions. Now we will discuss about the occurrence of these tight junctions. As I have already told you that these tight junctions are found in the epithelial cells. They form a kind of a, a bead like structure around the epithelial cells towards the apical region of the epithelial cells. And these are responsible for completely sealing the epithelial cells so that these epithelial cells will form a continuous uh, impenetrable kind of a sheet. Uh, in uh, tissues such as the uh, skin, smooth muscles of a GI tract or urothelium of a urinary bladder or even you will find these epithelial such a type of a tight junction uh, in epithelial cells of uh, lungs also. Now uh, we will discuss about the position of uh, uh, this tight junctions. You can see here this is the epithelial cell and this epithelial cells has a basement membrane. This region is called as the apical surface. This region is called as the basal surface. And in between these, you can see here a belt like a structure that is there. That belt like structure is nothing but the region around the tight junctions. So these tight junctions are responsible for sealing of the epithelial cells with each other or stitching of the epithelial cells with each other with the help of these tight junctions. You can see here these two cell 1 and cell 2 are stitched together with the help of 
this particular um, tide junctions. Now, you can see here such a type of uh, belt that runs along the um, apical side of the epithelial cells and these belts or we can say the tight junctions are responsible for stitching these two cells with each other so that this particular intercellular space you can see here on the apical side is separated from the intercellular space from the basal side so this is how that these tight junctions are responsible for sealing of the epithelial cells or epithelial lining. Now uh, we will discuss about structure of uh, tight junctions. You can see here we have taken example of uh, intestinal epithelium. You can see here this is the intestinal epithelial cells. This is the lumen of the intestine and this is a mucous layer which is present on the epithelial cells. This is the apical side of the epithelial cells or we can say that apical domain and this side is called as a apical, uh, sorry the base, basolateral surface or a basal domain of the epithelial cells. Now the tight junctions are present on this particular region on the apical side of the epithelial cells. Now if we enlarge this particular portion it will look like this. This is the plasma membrane of uh, this cell and this is the plasma membrane of uh, this cell. These plasma membranes of uh, these two neighboring cells will be joined together, they will be sealed together with the help of a protein complex that is known as a tight junction. Now at a reg so regular intervals you will find that such a tight junctions are sealing the space in between the uh, end, uh, these epithelial cells. Now these protein complexes are made up of two types of proteins. One is called as a transmembrane protein and another is called as a cytoplasmic proteins which both of these they form a, a tight junctions. Now what do you mean by transmembrane protein? Transmembrane protein is a protein which traverses through the plasma membrane its one side is outside the cell so that is called as extracellular domain and one side that is on to the cytoplasmic side that is called as a cytoplasmic domain. So this is how that these transmembrane proteins are there. Now the transmembrane protein of one cell interacts with the transmembrane protein of another cell in case of a tight junctions. Now what kind of a uh, proteins that are present in the transmembrane protein uh, or that are present in the tight junctions are occludin, claudin 1, E cadherins and uh, junctional adhesion molecule 1. So all these are a kind of a transmembrane protein. They interact with the same type of a transmembrane protein from the another uh, cell or neighboring cell. So this is how they are forming a kind of a a junction in between the cells. Now in turn these transmembrane proteins are interacting with the cytoplasmic protein and uh, proteins of the cytoskeleton that is actin. Now these cytoplasmic proteins are zona occludens 1, catenins, cingulins. So on the cytoplasmic side these particular proteins are interacting with these particular transmembrane protein. So together they form a protein complex that we call it as a tight junctions. So because of these tight junctions you can see here that uh, this particular space, the intercellular space in between the cells or from the apical side is uh, um, sealed and the molecules that from this particular luminal side they will not pass through these particular uh, sealing strands of uh, tight junctions. So this is how that the tight junctions are responsible for not allowing the entry of uh, substances from the lumen 
to the intracellular space at the patient side. Now we will discuss about the composition of proteins in the tight junction. There are different 40 types of proteins that are involved in formation of these tight junctions. That's why it is called as a protein complex. Now the important types of proteins that are present in the tight junctions, these are the transmembrane proteins, occludin, the name of a or a literal meaning of occluded means to stop. So here you can see the occluding proteins are arranged in such a manner that it will not allow any type of molecule to pass through it. Then uh, another type of a transmembrane molecule or a protein that is a cloudine is also there. It has been suggested that cloudines are responsible for passage of some sort of ions through it. Then uh, junctional adhesion molecules, they are present, they are uh, responsible for attaching these uh, two neighboring cells with each other. Then e cadenins that is extracellular uh, calcium dependent adhering molecules, they are also present in between the uh, neighboring cells and form the um, important protein in the tight junctions. So the intracellular side of these particular proteins, it interacts with the zona occludens or uh, catenins, cingulins or spectrin and in turn these cytoplasmic proteins interact with the cytoskeleton um, that is made up of actin. So this is how the protein composition is a very important in forming the tight junctions. Now we will discuss functions of tight junctions. The first function of tight junction is a prevention of diffusion of certain kinds of molecules via intercellular space. This can be very well studied in case of intestine. Now, if we enlarge the portion of this intestine, you can see here internally, intestinal epithelial cells are arranged like this. And this is the intestinal lumen. If this particular portion of the intestinal epithelium enlarge, we will find the epithelial cells joined together by tight junctions. Now these tight junctions are responsible for dividing the intercellular space into upper, you can see here upper intercellular space which is in continuation with the intestinal lumen and the intercellular space which is on the basal side of the intestinal epithelial cells. Now whatever the molecules that are present in the intestinal lumen, we know that the digested food material is there, various kinds of proteins are there, ions are there like a sodium, potassium. The digested food material contains the glucose, amino acids. So all such a kind of uh, uh, molecules that are prevented to pass through these intercellular spaces because of the presence of these tight junctions in between the epithelial cells. These molecules has to pass through the plasma membrane and enter into the cytoplasm and from cytoplasm they will then enter into the basal side of the epithelial cells into the intercellular space and from that intercellular space they will enter into the bloodstream. So, a particular kind of or a proper kind of a concentration gradient is maintained because of this and thus these tight junctions are responsible for prevention of diffusion of certain molecules directly through the intercellular space. 
Now, this can be very well studied with the help of this 3D structure also. For better understanding, you can see here, this is the intercellular space on the apical side of the epithelial cells. And this is the intercellular space on the basal side of the epithelial cells. And these are the sealing strands of a tight junctions that encircles each and every epithelial cells of the epithelium. Now, because of the presence of these tight junctions, this intercellular space is divided into apical side and basal side intercellular space. And whatever the material that comes in, that material is prevented to pass through these intercellular space into the basal side of the intercellular space or basal side intercellular space. Now, what is the purpose of such type of arrangement? Whatever the material that comes in, it has to pass through the plasma membrane into the cytoplasm of the epithelial cells and from that it will then move or transport it to the intercellular space on the basal side and from that space it will be taken to the bloodstream. So proper kind of a concentration gradient is maintained and any toxins that are that comes along with the food that are prevented to directly enter in the, into the bloodstream via these intercellular spaces. So this is the function of tight junctions that it prevents the diffusion of uh, molecules. It also divides the intercellular space into two, that is apical intercellular space and a basal intercellular space. So it forms a uh, compartments so that uh, the transport of uh, molecules is always through the uh, cells of the epithelium and not through the intercellular space. Now, we will discuss about the second function of uh, tight junctions is a Fein's function. We know that the tight junctions are forming a belt like structure around each and every epithelial cells. These tight junctions are responsible for not allowing certain kinds of uh, membrane proteins or lipids to pass from apical surface to the basal surface. So these proteins, they cannot diffuse from apical surface to the basal surface. We know that apical surface have a peculiar set of a specific set of a proteins which are responsible for a specific function. Similarly, the basal surface plasma membrane is also having a specific set of proteins which are made for a specific purpose. Now, the transport of this or we can say that the movement of these particular proteins from the apical surface to the basal surface is prevented and from the basal surface these proteins cannot move to the apical surface. So, a functional polarity that is maintained in a epithelial cells of the intestine by tight junctions. So, this is known as a fencing function of the tight junction. Now, for better understanding, we will discuss this particular topic of uh, importance of tight junctions in a lung tissue. See, this is the diagram that shows normal cells of lung epithelia, where this particular side is the apical surface of the epithelium or epithelial cells and this is the vasolateral surface of the epithelium. This is the lumen of the lung. Now, 
these cells in a normal condition these cells epithelial cells of the lung they express or they secrete a kind of a molecule that is known as a hero reticulin and this is a growth stimulant and this hero reticulin brings about the mitosis in the lung epithelium now there are receptors for hero reticulin on the basolateral surface of the epithelial cells of the lungs now this is the normal condition that because of the tight junctions when these tight junctions are intact this he reguli cannot move to the basolateral surface and cannot stimulate this receptor of he reguli but as we know that cigarette smoking is injurious to health when a smoke that comes into the lungs this smoke that acts upon the proteins of the tight junctions and because of that these proteins are damaged and in turn the tight junctions are also damaged now hitherto all these hemoglobin stimulants were present on only apical side of the epithelial cells now because of the damage in the tight junctions these hemoglobins will move into the basal side and now they will bind to the receptors of he reguli now because of the binding of these he reguliins these he reguliins will stimulate the epithelial cells to proliferate to undergo mitosis and thereby producing the more number of epithelial epithelial cells which will heal the damage that is done due to the smoke of the cigarette so this is how that autocrine stimulation of the epithelial cells prevents damage to the lungs but what happens that if the person is a chain smoker he continuously inhales this smoke and continuously starts to damage the tight junctions in between the epithelial cells which again continuously stimulates mitosis in the epithelial cells and gradually that becomes a cancer so this is the effect of damage to the tight junctions which can cause a serious health abnormalities in a patient now the third function of uh, tight junction is that in recent research it has been found that the transmembrane proteins which are forming these tight junctions they are also involved in signaling or transduction pathways now what do you mean by signaling and transduction pathways see when a particular kind of a signaling molecule which is present in the exterior of the cell that comes in it binds to the membrane proteins or a transmembrane proteins which are involved in formation of tight junctions then because of this binding a kind of a conformational change that takes place in these transmembrane proteins which changes the intracellular domain of these transmembrane proteins now this the intracellular domain which is on the cytoplasmic side will produce a signal inside the cytoplasm so this is how that the external signal is taken to the inside of the cell so this is known as a cell signaling and transduction pathways so it has been found that these uh, tight junction proteins are involved in such a type of interaction with the external uh, stimuli now the last function of uh, the tight junction is that some proteins of the tight junctions that are responsible for acting as a receptors for various kinds of stimulants that stimulants may be external molecules or that may be a bacteria that may be a virus for example we know that a nectin 1 is a transmembrane protein which is involved in formation of tight junctions 
this nectin 1 interacts with or act as a receptor for herpes simplex virus. So this is how that certain kinds of tight junction proteins that are also involved in interacting with the this particular or acting as a receptors for various kinds of molecules thereby changing their own conformation and taking that signal inside the cell and that signal may modulate the gene expression in that particular cell. So this is how that the tight junction proteins are involved in modulation of a gene expression also. What do you mean by modulation of a gene expression? That means uh, it can compel that particular cell's DNA to produce different kinds of proteins that are um, involved in or that, are, that may be helpful for such type of viruses. So this is how the tight junction proteins work. So this is all about the tight junctions. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel Pamuj Biogenes for latest uploads or like my videos and if you have any queries, please don't hesitate to write in a comment box. Thank you very much.